Okay, so let's make a summary of what we have done so far. Number one, we have defined failure. It's important to realize that we have uh, made the decision to define failure based on what we expect failure to be, right? So, for example, in the case of two people meeting at the gym, we said that uh, failure is achieved when a person um, is at the point where they cannot do one more push-up in one set, right? That is a definition of failure. Again, perhaps the more important thing is that we have the choice of defining what failure is. Particularly in engineering, um, clearly the choice is con constrained by what we expect to happen, of course, in the worst case scenario. Now, we have also said or made the link between failure and strength, right? So strength describes a condition at failure. So when failure is occurring, there's a condition in the system, a parameter maybe, a stress, a force, a number, that describes that failure, okay? Or is associated with that failure. So when I, what I mean by condition, I mean a parameter or a stress state. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about soil. In the case of the push-up example, the strength is defined as the maximum number of push-ups, for example, that a person can do once. Sorry, I guess in one set. In one set. Okay? So, if the person is doing what they believe to be a push-up that they can do, but they cannot do it, so they cannot complete that last push-up, then the strength is the number of push-ups they that they have actually um, completed. Okay? Now, perhaps, um, it's interesting because perhaps a better description of failure in that regard, if we think, if I think about, or if we think about uh, civil engineering materials and what happens to them, we perhaps the more relevant or correct definition of failure for that case would be uh, to, would be basically thought as follows. Let, let's just describe what's happening. The person begins to do push-ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They do 50, right? When they do 51, they're halfway up the push-up in number 51, and they literally cannot push up the rest of the way, just half, and they collapse onto the floor. That right there is the failure. So you see the actual failure happening, which means is that it's basically the person being unable to push themselves up the second half of the way. At that moment is when you say, okay, that's I see failure happening. What is the stress condition? Or what is the number of push-ups? And the number of push-ups is 51, not 50. Because 51 is that one that they couldn't do. So the strength would be literally 51 rather than 50, as we had defined before. It doesn't matter that much um, because that example is just an example uh, to be able to paint the picture for the strength of, of a civil engineering materials. And uh, it will be easier, let's say, to or more clear to see, to, to define what the strength parameter is at failure for a failing civil engineering material. Okay, But general, in general, it's the same. Uh, you have basically the same... They're analogous, basically, these this two stories. The story of a concrete cylinder breaking and the story of a person doing push-ups. Okay, number, uh, let's see, number three. What else have we talked about? Well, we've said that, yeah, civil engineering materials fail when loaded in general or typical civil engineering conditions. They fail by what's called a rupture or fracture and here I'm basically talking about rock, concrete, soil, okay? Not really steel, steel actually has a yield point and that's what we use as the 
failure point, but just let's say for now that civil engineering materials in general fail by a rupture or fracture that occurs on a particular failure plane. Okay, That failure or fracture, which happens on the failure plane, is driven by shear. So when you see a concrete cylinder breaking, because it's at its max resistance, um, you see it breaking, you see the fractures occurring. At that moment is where you say, okay, I see the, I see the failure actually occurring. What is the stress condition that is relevant for this, con for this failure situation? And so if you look at the failure planes, you realize that they are planes where the shear, has, the, the shear stress has overcome or reached really reached, not overcome, it cannot be overcome. The failure, the shear stress on those planes has reached the shear strength. So basically what you have is, is you are limited to define the strength as the shear stress on the failure plane at failure. At failure because you can actually see the failure, it's the moment of failure and the shear stress on the failure plane, on the actual rupture plane, that's what, in the most purest way, we would define as a strength. Again, because the whole failure occurs because this shear stress is equal to this strength, or the shear stress, sorry, imposed on that plane is equal to the strength, therefore, you have a rupture. Now, it's important to complete this by saying, again, that structural engineers define the strength as the principal normal stress at failure. This stress doesn't act on the failure plane. It's not a shear stress, first of all. Let's remove the prime, that doesn't mean anything for concrete. Um, so, this normal stress is the vertical stress on the specimen, which is the cylinder, which is the point, which is the element, they're all the same, right? Remember the concrete cylinder represents an element which represents a point. They're all the same. Uh, in any case, this strength as they define it is the principal stress, major principal stress at failure, which is a vertical imposed stress at failure. This stress doesn't act on the failure plane and it's not a shear stress, it's a normal stress. So it's kind of, for the purist, it's kind of a weird definition but it's a convenient one, let's say, for design. And that's what they call F sub C prime. That's for concrete. Okay, so this is what we've done essentially so far in general. I've kind of repeated a few things here, but that's, I think that's okay. Um, now we're going to be talking about soil. Let's say a few things before we move on to the basic concept for soil. Remember that soil is made of particles. And you could claim that concrete is also, but in concrete the particles or such particles are bonded, right? For soil you can have bonded particles too, but in general we consider them to be unbonded. So the soil is already fractured let's say. It's not, a, it's not like a rock or concrete or steel. It's made of particles. It can actually flow even when dry, for example, a sand, right? So it's made of particles. So if you try to impose a condition where you will have a failure rupture, or a, sorry, a rupture, the failure in the form of a rupture or fracture, then you could argue that you really cannot do that because the soil is already broken into particles. But the fact is that you can. And so the way we do it, and as an example or as a tool to demonstrate all this strength or most of the strength properties of soil, we have selected the direct shear test, which you have seen in the lab and also have seen a video of um, in this lecture series. In the direct shear test, what we do is take the soil, place it in a box, literally, that is split in half. We fix the bottom. There are different types of direct shear, but 
in one example we fix the bottom so the soil is in here right this is the soil we fix the bottom and then we push or pull on the top and we create a failure plane that is horizontal let's say to the floor because it essentially looks like this okay so what we do then is say the same as a concrete cylinder but we adopt this definition up here and we say okay at the moment of failure which we'll define in a second what is the shear stress on that plane what's this that's an element it's a point same thing element point lab specimen they're all exactly the same so the question is then at failure when you see this thing failing we don't really know exactly what happens uh, uh, so far we don't know exactly how the what the failure is defined as but let's say you could actually see the moment of failure your question would be what is the shear stress on that plane which is the failure plane shear stress on the failure plane at the moment of failure and if you can get that then that's a strength and that's what we do now you'll see that we are going to back calculate some parameters from this strength and that's where a little bit of the confusion may come but uh, hopefully we'll we'll have it straight when we finish of these videos okay so soil coming up